Hello, my quilting friends. My name is Leah Day, and welcome to episode 142 of the podcast. And today I want to share about nesting for my baby, the things that I am making, uh, fun projects that I'm prepping up and getting ready. Uh, I'm really not working a lot these days, but when I can get a little bit of stitching time in, when I can do a little bit of quilting, I am having a blast. So I hope that you're looking forward to this podcast episode as I share all these fun little projects. Uh, and first I'll share about this one. This is a grandmother's flower garden. And while I'm chatting with you today, I am just going to get prepped up and give it a good press. Uh, I need to apologize just to start out with, I am slightly out of breath. And this is just normal stuff. <laughs> this is just how things go, uh, you know. The other day, Josh and I were having a conversation about business or something, and I was like, I can't catch my breath to argue with you. <laughs> so I was like, I'm going to go lay down on the couch so I can stop arguing with you about this. Um, but yeah, it, you know, it is just one of those things. It's the weight. It's, you know, I'm taking lots of supplements, but, you know, it's just one of those things. I just feel generally these days slightly kind of ah, gaspy for breath. Uh, and, but I gotta say, generally, my health is great. Uh, my baby is doing great. Hit the 31 week mark, which I'm super excited about. Uh, and yeah, it's just, it's been wonderful. And I feel so enormously blessed and thank you, thankful for this baby. Uh, now this shirt that I'm wearing <laughs> pretty much sums up. Uh, it says, the baby made me eat it. And this was sent to me by a friend. Thank you so much, Katie. Uh, she sent me a big box of maternity clothes and baby clothes because she had a baby girl last year. And I absolutely love this shirt. Number one, it's the most comfortable thing in my whole world wardrobe. And yeah, I have been, <laughs> well, in the words of James, I can't believe you just bought a bag of Cheetos. I never bought Cheetos. I never bought stuff like that. But, you know, there is such a thing as cravings. And they come and it's like one little bag of Cheetos won't kill me. So, yeah, I give into that a little bit. And he kind of laughs at me a little bit about it. Makes fun of me whenever I'm craving a moon pie or something like that. Uh, which, you know, again, would normally not buy. Normally my policy is to make sugar myself. And I have been baking a lot. But every once in a while, I'm like, oh, man, you know, double-decker moon pie. That would just be amazing. Double-decker moon pie and Cheetos. <laughs> um, but again, yes, I am. <laughs> I am also eating really well, too. Lots of smoothies, lots of shakes, um, taking lots of vitamins. So we are both doing really well. Very, very healthy. And um, so I think something, I might not have announced it in the last uh, podcast, but I am having a baby girl. So I am so excited about that. And that is one thing I am getting prepped up is some baby girl clothes, um, some, you know, just some different fun things that I can create now and have ready for her. So this grandmother's flower garden, this was actually a quilt that I bought on eBay. Uh, and if you are wanting to just have some good practice tops, you know, just something that's like, you did not take all the time to hand stitch thousands of one and a quarter inch hexagons and put them all together. If you would like something, you know, to put on your long arm, to put on your frame, you know, something that allows you a lot of practice time um, and it's beautiful, then get on eBay and check out what's available. Now, the prices can be heartbreaking. Uh, we know the value of hand stitching all these hexagons together and that is uh, priceless because uh, yeah, there's no amount of money that could ever pay for the woman's time who made this. But, um, you know, the market determines how much a quilt top that's not been quilted. And this is probably, I don't think it's necessarily an antique. I would say it was probably put together my judgment would be 70s, maybe late 70s, 80s, just based off of the fabrics, but that's just, I mean, I'm not an expert by any means, but the fabrics just strike me as, you know, similar to some of the ones that I have from my grandmothers and they made them in the 60s and 70s. Um, so, 
yeah, you can find some pretty interesting stuff and some really good prices and then get something that you can play with and get a lot of skill, a lot of bang for your buck. And again, not have to piece thousands of tiny hexagons together by hand, which is crazily enough, the fastest way to do it. Hexagons are very particular shape and the best possible way to put them together is by hand. And they're great, you know, carry along project. If you're traveling a lot, if you are setting and waiting and, you know, um, doctor's offices and stuff like that, uh, it's a great little carry along project. I love hexes for that, but they do take a lot of time. And this is only a part of the quilt. I actually cut it in half, which is so terrible to admit, but again, I didn't make it. Uh, <laughs> I bought it, but then it's mine, so I can do whatever I want to with it. Um, what it is, is I want to make more tablecloth quilts. I love to have a quilt for my tablecloth, and I just love how springy and bright and cheerful this is. It really, you know, I just love how much it brightens up the space, uh, and it just, I don't know it just makes me smile and grandmother's flower gardens are one of my favorites as far as traditional quilt patterns go so this is the smaller section it's about 36 inches wide three sets of flowers across and I'm probably going to put this on the long arm first I'm probably going to put this on my Cunique 21 and play around with QCT designs and kind of do experimenting and playing uh, I'm getting into digitizing my own designs, which I absolutely love. So this is going to be a great way to experiment with hexagon shaped designs. And then um, once I kind of figure out the design that I want, uh, I will then attach the big quilt, which is the size of my, ta you know, what I need for a tablecloth, uh, which is about, for my table, it's about 50 by 70. And uh, so when I cut this, I cut it very carefully. Uh, in between the hexagons. So you see I have a nice little white border around the flowers on both sides on this one. So I think this is gonna go together really, really well, but I wanted to give it a good press. You know, this is the thing, it's not in the best shape. I've got stains, um, the fabrics are really wrinkly, uh, the seam allowances are kinda going all over the place. So I wanna give it a nice press so that when I get it on the long arm, you know, it's not, quite so all over the place. I am not using starch though, and this might be something that you're curious about. Um, generally, I find starching an already pieced quilt, the fabrics can go a little funny, and it takes a lot of patience and a lot of very careful handling in order for that to work out well. I don't think that I need to necessarily starch this, although it is, pretty wobbly bobbly. I might change my mind on that. I'm allowed to change my mind on that uh, if I want to. So um, right now I'm just giving it a general press and then just kind of checking in and taking a look at it and saying, okay, you know, do I want to mark these stains, you know, to know where they are? You know, am I going to do something about that beforehand? And generally you don't. Generally a quilt top, and this is the reason why quilt tops end up on eBay and they are so cheap because you can't really do anything with them. Um, if you take a quilt top and you put it on your table and it is not quilted, those seam allowances are exposed basically to the elements, right? And they're only going to wear, fray, and fall apart. Um, the whole thing is delicate. You know, obviously it has value because it, you know, anyone would be that knows anything about quilting would look at this and go, this is just too much work to just throw in the trash but it being unfinished, unquilted, you know, those three layers, the batting and the backing, are what give a quilt stability, longevity, the ability to be washed, the ability to be used and enjoyed. And uh, it's always interesting, you know, the very first beginner question that I often receive from new quilters is, you know, why do I need to bother to quilt my quilt? And it's those, you know, stitches that go through all three layers, the top, the batting, and the backing. That's what gives, holds everything together, gives it the stability, gives it the structure, and stops it from just the first time you wash it blowing up like a big balloon and being completely impossible to spread flat on your table or on your bed again, right? So 
this is why you can find good deals on eBay. This is why you can find, you know, beautifully pieced grandmother's flower gardens for under $100 or $200 because they do have value in the one sense of, oh my gosh, someone pieced all of that together. I cannot possibly throw that away. But they also don't have value in the sense that it cannot be used and it must have a lot of work put into it to actually get it finished to make it a usable piece, right? <sighs> so that's a little tangent about that. <laughs> I'll be honest, guys. I'm kind of out of practice, a podcast, and I have to apologize a bit. Um, but, you know, as I'm kind of going through what I wanted to share with you, I thought, you know, this was kind of an interesting thing. And um, you may be in a position where you're learning, you know, new techniques, uh, frame quilting techniques, and panels are great. I'm, I'm getting into panel design. Uh, I've just recently designed a new star, our cross and star panel for Honest Fabric, and that's honestfabric.com. Uh, but panels don't have seam allowance, and seam allowance does change things a little bit. You know, it's the difference between a real quilt and a panel. Uh, a real quilt has seam allowance. It has fabrics that are wobbly bobbly, like that particular um, flower that I'm working on, these hexagons, were slightly distorted. And what was interesting is I wanted to actually maybe possibly add more hexagons to one of these. I bought a pack of one and a quarter inch paper pieces to piece more. And then I realized the template that she was using, whoever made this quilt, was not square. That's the wrong, that's the wrong terminology. It's a hexagon, it was not proper hexagon. They were slightly, it was like two sides of the hexagon were one and an eighth and the rest, the other four sides were one and a quarter. So there's some distortion going on here and it's gonna, it's gonna play out on the frame. It really will, it's gonna be interesting. I think I'm gonna end up doing a lot, a lot of water soluble thread basting where I, I load up on the long arm with um, water soluble thread in the bobbin and the top and then stitch some straight lines over it, you know, try and get the fabric to behave as I put it on the frame and flatten it out as much as possible. And then I need to make sure that my design, whatever I choose, is forgiving enough so that I don't end up with pleats. And I mean, it's not the end of the world if I do, but it would be nice if I didn't have pleats between these flowers or around the flowers. I'm thinking if I quilt the flowers as hexagons, like put a hexagon shaped design on top of them, and then that, and then a nice gap between the hexagon and the background, like maybe a triangular shape design in that background between them. I think that'll give me enough play, enough space between them so that if there's some wiggly wobbliness distortion, then that can just kind of go in that in between no man's land between them. I think that'll work out well. Works in my head. We'll see if it works in reality. And speaking of which, there are times, and I'm sure that you've experienced this too, where a project in your head is like, oh my gosh, that's gonna be so pretty. That's gonna be so amazing. I can't wait to make it. It's just gonna be so cool. And then, <laughs> and then you start actually making it and it's like, oh my gosh, that's ugly. <laughs> you know, it's like, that is not working out the way it's supposed to in my head. You know, uh, there have been so many times that that has happened to me, guys, you know, where, you know, on paper that just sounded so cool, you know, or that quilting design just sounded like that would totally work and be my new favorite quilting design. And then it gets on the quilt and it's like, ah, uh, that doesn't look quite right. That's not what I was hoping for. Uh, <laughs> And you just got to roll with it, right? Well, I had the opposite experience with this quilt. And that is the delightful experience of having a quilt turn out better than what you envisioned it. Which, eh, for me, that happens, I mean, it's pretty rare. It's maybe once every two or three years, I can say that I, something in my head, and it's like I design it, kind of think it through, and it works out pretty nicely. But then when I actually start working on it, it 
the colors come together, the design is right, it's exactly what it wanted, if if even more, and it's like it just it just hits that like yay, you know, like I just love it. And that is this quilt for my daughter. So uh, we're not gonna really set up like a baby room. Uh, we're gonna do. Uh, it's mostly because the house is still in transition because of the office upstairs. So she's gonna nap uh, in James's room during the day, sleep in the office at night, and I wanted to have just a little quilt close to her crib at night. And so this is gonna hang off of the side of one of my bookshelves. And it is a strawberry quilt. Um, if you have listened to past podcast episodes, then you know that I collect um, dishes like ceramics that are in the shapes of fruits and vegetables. I love strawberries. I love watermelons. Uh, my recent acquisition was a um, <laughs> butternut squash shaped butter dish. <laughs> I found that one on eBay too. And so I decided I really love strawberries and watermelons and I'm finding tons of baby girl clothes and lots of cute fabrics with watermelons and strawberries on them. So I designed a strawberry block. Uh, it's kind of pointing on the side and then uh, got on eBay and looked for a variety of red and green fabrics. Cause I wanted this to be really scrappy, happy, lots of different reds, you know, coming together to make the strawberry shape. And it just came out perfect. The greens, I ended up not really doing a wide variety. I just uh, did one color of green per strawberry. And then to tie them together, and this is kind of a skinny wall hanging. It's about 10 inches wide by 50 inches long. And so, then to tie them together, I took some green bias binding. This is quarter inch bias binding and glued that in place. I've already stitched it down. I've already done the quilting on that and kind of twisted it up. And bias binding is so much fun to play with, guys. I really think that it's underused in our quilts. You can do such quick appliques with it. A um, lot of bang for your buck. You can do really wide stuff. You can do really skinny stuff. And it's just a matter of fabric manipulation. So how I did this, because bias binding, you know, it comes in the pack straight. And I managed to do like curly cues and twisted tendrils and stuff. Um, the basic method is to you to go very slow. I only did about an inch or two at a time. I use starch and my iron, press it into shape, and then I use Elmer's glue to glue it in shape. And I use my micro tip bottles to really control the amount of glue that I'm putting on the quilt. So that is how I did the bias binding and those vines. And then I was like, well, you know, that's pretty much it. But I really want an extra challenge. And that was machine embroidery. So I digitized a little strawberry leaf and I went through probably five different versions of the strawberry leaf because a real strawberry leaf has jagged edges. And that was really challenging to embroider. It wasn't going right. And I was ending up with some long stitches and furry edges and it wasn't looking good. So I kept experimenting, kept playing with it. Uh, I was stitching that out on my Janome Horizon 15,000. So yeah, just kept playing and stitching until I came up with the perfect design. And then it was pretty terrifying putting the actual quilt top, the done quilt top on the embroidery machine and stitching. I did three of the little leaves, one there and then one down here. Um, you know, I didn't want to overwhelm it. I, you know, I think three is just about perfect. And that it was, it was tricky to get the leaf shape exactly centered and where I wanted it. And, you know, all that nine yards, but I learned a lot along the way. I learned a lot about a new program I'm playing with for digitizing and I had a great time and it is, oh my gosh, it is just better than I, better than the vision in my head. And I am working on the quilting. So I am contrasting pretty, pretty boldly. The background, the backing of this quilt is white. It's like a cream color. And I am using matching color thread, which I don't usually do. It's kind of a slight, slight mismatch. So a slightly lighter red going over the strawberries, slightly lighter green going over the different greens. Uh, and that is contrasting enormously with this cream colored backing fabric. 
Um, and yeah, you know, if you hear your machine make a bad noise when you're doing something like this, you gotta stop and check the back, pick out those stitches, tie off and bury your thread tails. You know, you can't leave bird's nests. You can't leave, you know, boogers and stuff on the back of your quilt. So it's going, I'm so pleased with it. So I'm doing one strawberry, I'm trying to do like, you know, one strawberry a day. Um, I will be honest, it is painful to set down for long periods of time. So one strawberry is about as much as I can do. Uh, my tailbone is just mm, driving me nuts. It's painful to drive. I have, you know, like I, I kind of a circular pillow to set on, the whole nine yards of that. Um, but it's just, it's a normal pregnancy thing. Um, your ligaments and um, spine just start to get wobbly bobbly. I mean, that's the best way to describe it. Um, it's, it's just, you know, it's all those relaxing hormones that are gonna, um, you know, enable me to give birth, but then they're not concentrated just on one place, like my hips. They are full body, which is why some people have really bad heartburn. I've had bad heartburn this time, um, which I heard a, a funny old wife's tale from someone, a, a waitress the other day, and she said, uh, heartburn is a sign that your baby will have a full head of hair <laughs> when they're born. <laughs> I said, well, that would be awesome. I would love for my little girl to have a full head of hair when she comes out. James was bald for like two years, <laughs> two solid years. He was completely bald. So that will be really, really funny if she does have a full head of hair. I don't know if that's accurate or not. So, uh, yeah, it's, it's, it is just harder to set and stitch. So I do my little, I do a little bit there and then I'll get up and I have my desk still set up as a treadmill, uh, a treadmill desk. And so I'll do a little bit of, you know, check some email, that kind of thing, do a little bit of walking. Uh, and then I just spend a good bit of time laying on the couch, hanging out with James, playing video games. Like we're just having a really fun time this summer. We really are. I told him going into it when I, once I realized, you know, I was pregnant um, this winter, I said, I think this summer is gonna be hanging out by the pool, eating a lot of watermelon. And we've been doing that a lot too. So we have been having a really fun time. And I have just managed to get this all pressed and I need to decide if I wanna do starch or not and really, really get everything flat. This is the thing, all of my seam allowances are nutso. They are all going in all different sorts of directions. So I need to figure out, do I wanna actually get that 100% pressed flat or just kind of stick it on the long arm and go with it? I don't know. I have to make a decision one way or the other. And this is the thing I love about hexagons, and here I'll show you a picture of it. Um, I just love how they look on the back. I, mean, I, I almost think that a hexagon quilt is just as pretty on the back as it is on the front because of the way the seam allowances nest and flip. It does not look like though this was ever pressed the right way. I'm looking at it and I'm not seeing any of the, like how it works is if as you go, you press the seams so that um, where the seams come together, it's three seams comes together, it makes almost like a little miniature hexagon where they fan out. But I'm looking at this and it is, it was never pressed that way. <laughs> so if I try and take that on and force it into submission, I will have to press every single seam allowance across this entire quilt. And I'm just, I don't have that much energy for it. So I'm gonna say no, I'm just gonna stick it on the long arm and cross my fingers and hope that it goes okay. And I'm not planning on stitching this in the ditch anyway. I don't think that that would work. Like I said, I think if I got too persnickety with the design, I would most likely end up with pleats because there is some distortion going on. There was some, there was some creative piecing there. And that's the thing, you know, um, you know, buying a, a quilt on eBay, you'll end up with some creative piecing, definitely. So next I think I'll get some of this watermelon fabric pressed, nice and flat, so I can cut out some more baby clothes. Uh, so a few things I've been making. My main goal has been to just keep things simple uh, because, you know, my 
James was my first, obviously. I know roughly how long my, you know, baby girl is going to be using certain things, wearing certain things. I won't need burp cloths forever. So what I've decided to do with burp cloths is I just take a regular kitchen towel and I found these at Hobby Lobby and I love them because they're fruits and vegetables. And this is a uh, citrus, so limes and lemons and oranges and blood oranges. Uh, that's the print, it's terry cloth, super soft. And I'm just folding these in half long ways so that it makes just a long skinny rectangle. And I just sew down the long side first and then down both ends. And it makes, I think, a pretty perfect burp cloth. You know, I, and I like it because after Betty's grown out of that stage, I can just rip out three seams and I have a dish towel again, right? That just seems very practical to me. Um, I, I, I don't like unitaskers, <laughs> either in sewing or in baby stuff, right? So yeah, I just like that. And it doesn't need to be, you know, anything, anything more than that. I don't need to put batting in it or anything like that. This is gonna be more than absorbent all by itself. And that's so, super easy to create. I've been working on some patterns for um, pants and these look really big and I know that because this was a tip from my mother-in-law, Ellen. Uh, she's been on my mind a lot lately, guys, because she was just so sweet and helpful when James, when I was pregnant with James. Uh, and her advice was buy big because you can put a baby in bigger pants. They're not moving <laughs> that much, right? And, uh, and then she'll grow into it and be able to wear it as a toddler. You know, the longer she'll be able to wear it, they, they, cuter it will be. And so I created this pattern uh, and this is gonna, I'm, aim, I'm thinking this is be probably fit her really well when she's probably about one and a half, two. I mean, it'll actually fit fit, but I'm gonna stick her in these like when she's little. It was, and it's one of those funny things. I had a pair of pants that Ellen bought for James when he was a newborn and he wore those until first or second grade. And it broke my heart when he finally grew out of them. It was like, oh my gosh, those special pants. You've finally grown out of them. Uh, and because I'm sewing these myself, I'm sewing them with um, le uh, cutting up my old jeans. So Betty gets my old jeans. And then I'm doing a little bit of embroidery. And what I love, um, we had church, it was about a month ago. And uh, we there was this wonderful, wonderful sermon. And uh, the the psalm that was kind of the guiding uh, story behind the sermon was Psalm 139. And it is, I am fearfully and wonderfully made. I think the beginning of that is praise God because I am fearfully and wonderfully made. And I love that. So I embroidered that on the leg of her pants and a cute little cross on the back. So I just love that. I love being able to do little things like that um, because I cut it out. Uh, and then when it's flat, you can do a lot of stuff with embroidery. Once you sew the garment, it makes it a lot more challenging. So doing all the decorations when the garment is still, you know, flat, not sewn together is the best time. And uh, so pants don't have to fit immediately, but I do want some shirts that do fit at the very beginning. And so this is my little newborn shirt and I've got the flip cuffs. So flip cuffs are newborn babies have long fingernails. And it, <laughs> even if you cut them like that day, uh, they seem to grow back overnight. And then they, they, because they're, you know, flailing around, kind of doing their thing, they'll scratch themselves and, you know, and it's just, you know, you don't want to mess up their beautiful faces. So the flip cuffs really help with that. Uh, and that every time I make one of these t-shirts, I have to think, cause it, as I'm making that part, because it seems wrong the way I sew it, it's like, oh, that, that seems like that's the wrong way of doing it, but it always ends up right. It's kind of hard to describe. Uh, and just doing two snaps down the front and a little opening. Uh, and I decided to do it open front like that uh, for space for the umbilical cord. You know, first few days, you kind of have a kind of gross little umbilical cord thing going on. So you want an open front shirt for a brand newborn and super soft material. 
the more I wash it, the more it softens up. And this one is made with oranges. <laughs> yeah, I've got kind of a fruit theme going on for my daughter. <laughs> I really hope that she likes fruit when she grows up. Uh, she's gonna be like, why did you stick me in all of that stuff? It's like, well, it just, it makes me crack up. I just love it. I, you know, it, it just, it brings me joy. It really does. I love my fruit and vegetable dishes and I love fruit and vegetable fabrics too. So I'm gonna cut out more shirts, I think, from this watermelon. And this is like a vintage strawberry print that I found on eBay. Um, but doing a lot of eBay buying, I gotta be honest. Um, I just really got fed up with Amazon and I realized that eBay has a lot of sellers that are people just trying to make ends meet, you know, um, just trying to survive the pandemic and being shut down. They might have a quilt shop or a business and, um, you know, have some fabrics and stuff uh, and put them together in auctions, that kind of thing, and just trying to make ends meet with it. So I started buying from eBay just simply to support more small businesses. Um, and it's a great way to do that guys. So that's why I've been focusing on that pretty much stopped buying on Amazon entirely now for that reason. Um, and I feel better about that too. Uh, and I also have found so many awesome things that, you know, are put together by an individual that would be almost impossible to find, you know, from a company. Like I found these really cute, like these are all the fabrics I prepped up for the uh, strawberry quilt, like um, tone on tone whites. And once I prepped up all this, I was like, oh wow, I can make a Christmas quilt too. Cause I've got white, green and red and all of these tone on tone reds. And you know, I had a huge collection of lots of different fabrics and things like that, but I never really collected tone on tone. Um, you know, I was more into batiks. So that's a new area of my stash. And then, you know, I trashed my stash, what, two years ago, three years ago? So I don't really have much of a stash left anyway. So it's been really fun to find packs of fat quarters and collections and stuff. These are not, you know, these are not being put together by, you know, a company like Moda or something like that. They're just being put together by someone that has, you know, all of these different things and cuts them up and puts them online and it works out great. So I like that. Oh, so what else has been going on? A uh, couple posts and I am trying to get some stuff on YouTube, trying to be a little bit more regular on my posting. Uh, don't worry when I take a week off here or there. It's just kind of, you know, it's just the normal pattern of things. I've got mommy brain so bad. I mean, I, I can sit down some days and try and answer an email and I know what I want to say, but the work of saying it just, <laughs> it feels like I'm running a marathon and it, it's, it is, it's, I, you know, and, and I, you know, the thing I come back to is just, it's purely biological. I just think that, that this time in my life being pregnant again, you know, simplicity is key. And sometimes I found myself like, instead of you know, writing three sentences to respond to something, I will cut it down to one just to make sure that I make sense and it's logical and it's, you know, clear. Um, because sometimes I'll contradict myself in the same email because I'm, you know, my brain is just not quite all there. <laughs> and Josh is taking over a lot of that work for me, which is so good. So one post that I have shared, actually two posts that I've shared and a new pattern is Mally. This is Mally the Maker from the book, Mally the Maker and the Queen in the Quilt. And so little girl doll, the pattern comes with instructions on how to make her a t-shirt, pants with real working pockets, and of course her body with a full head of yarn hair. So this was my first prototype. And then I've made two more and they're just fun. They're just, they're just lots and lots of fun. Um, I love sewing, you know, for, for Mally the Maker. I love making Miss Bunny. She was the first doll pattern that I made. Uh, so you can make Miss Bunny, you can make Mally. And the clothes are interchangeable because they basically use the same body for both. 
so Miss Bunny can wear Mally's t-shirt and pants and Mally can wear Miss Bunny's dress and panties as well. So yeah, they really turned out good. And I love using these uh, 1930s reproduction prints for her t-shirts. I think that looks super cute. And you know, you can mix it up. You can do all kinds of different variations. If you wanna make a little, little boy doll, if you wanna make now, if you wanna dress Miss Bunny in Mally's clothes and kind of make her a little bit more masculine, then you can do that. You can really have lots and lots of fun with this. I have had a lot of requests for overalls from Miss Bunny. It's on the list, but again, mommy brain. Uh, so I don't know when that will ever happen. Uh, not promising anything, I'll put it that way. Uh, and so I just recently shared a uh, video on how to make Mally. It's about, it's an hour long. It's a long video, but I really went into a lot of detail on her yarn hair because that can be kind of tricky and you wanna make sure she has a nice full head of yarn hair so she doesn't have bald spots or anything. Uh, and you can also find the video on how to make her shirt. And then I just needed Josh's help to get the pants video edited probably going to run another hour, I'll be honest, but it's pants with real working pockets and a button fly. So it's exactly like pants and a t-shirt that, you know, it, it's basically the same sewing concepts as a t-shirt you would wear yourself or, you know, pants with real working pockets and a button fly, that kind of thing. It gets those same concepts down. Uh, but on a very miniature scale, not too miniature, but still, I mean, it is small pieces. And I love that. I mean, I, I did kind of nerd out a little bit on that and uh, I had so much fun making it. So like I said, the last video will be on how to make the pants and uh, that should be out maybe in July, I'm hoping. Oh yeah, well, we're gonna say July. I will try and get that out in July. Uh, I do have lots of little design videos. And when I say little, I mean that they're only like a minute, minute and a half long. Um, and I actually shot those uh, a couple days before our house flooded in 2020. So that lets you know how long those have been on the shelf. And it's good that I had them because, you know, it's it, like I said, it is hard to, it's sometimes hard to string two words together and actually make sense. It's hard to, put things together these days. Um, I am not complaining. Please don't feel like I am at all. I am embracing mommy brain and just allowing myself the break because, I mean, you know, trying to force it would be just too, too, too difficult, um, too challenging. Uh, and, you know, I'm just, I'm wanting to enjoy this time, guys. I really, really am. Uh, and in that topic, a uh, couple updates on Grace Company and Grace Company products. Um, generally, just about everyone is having problems stocking things. So uh, getting products in stock, keeping them in stock, um, shipping prices are continuously going up and then prices for products are also going up too. So across the board, prices are going up. Uh, July 1st, um, we're probably, I'm thinking about just setting a lot of products out of stock, um, just to simply lighten our load uh, through July, August, possibly September. And we're still debating that. So I'm not, I'm not 100% yet, but um, you know, I spend an enormous amount of time these days just answering email, uh, offering support to my quilting customers, people that have bought long arms from me, people who have bought frames from me. Um, and that is, you know, a very, very important job that I do as a dealer. So I'm almost uh, feeling like maternity leave. <laughs> maternity leave in that sense is just simply kind of limiting what I'm selling in the next couple of months. And uh, that way I'm still available to everyone who has bought in the past. I'm just not taking on new customers um, during this time until my baby girl is born and my mommy brain hopefully <laughs> lifts and I can string two sentences together and not feel quite so discombobulated, right? So thinking about that still on the fence, but, um, you'll see on our site, you know, if you see stuff that's out of stock and you're interested in it, send us an email, we can still work things out. 
Um, it's mostly just kind of lightening the load a little bit, you know, I'm um, just taking a little bit of a break. Definitely August, September going to be um, taking, taking a break, doing less, uh, just simply so that we enjoy our time with our new baby uh, and adjust to that as a family because it's going to be an adventure not only to have a new baby with a teenager in the house, uh, but to have a new baby, um, you know, at this age and um, where we are, you know, with all that we do already, you know, chickens and bunnies and cats and I've got new kittens that have just been born. So all of that, um, just trying to you know, have our new baby girl fit in with everything else that we have going on and that will be good. So uh, I'm hoping, I'm really hoping that this baby girl is as good a sleeper as James was. I doubt we get that lucky, but James was such an awesome sleeper. I mean, almost from birth, it would get, he could be crying at uh, 10.59 at night and then the clock would strike 11 and he'd be out he would be out until like 5 a.m. And that was from birth. It was insane. And I didn't realize how good I had it. And I've been reading some <laughs> horror stories. <laughs> so I know I might not get it that easy with this baby, but I'm hoping. Um, but yeah, it's, it's, as always, it's always going to be an adventure. It's always going to be marvelously fun, but probably a little bit exhausting. And that's okay. Um, we all have those seasons of our life you know, we go through seasons and some seasons are calm and peaceful. And I feel like I'm in that season right now where it's, you know, hang out with James and Josh and hang out by the pool and eat watermelon and play video games and just enjoy this time. And then we're going into a season of probably not a lot of sleep. Uh, and, uh, <laughs> crying baby, crazy, that kind of stuff. And that's okay. I'm looking forward to it. I am actually really looking forward to it. And I absolutely just, I just love this vintage strawberry print. You know, this, you gotta, you gotta make things that make you smile. And this is a thing guys, you know, I haven't been making as much. Um, everything I've shown you today, I've been working on now, you know, like the t-shirts, the pants, you know, the, the strawberry quilt. I've been working on that for two months. You know, I don't work on things as fast and I'm not getting, you know, chugging through the quilt tops and all the things that I used to do. Uh, but I feel like the things that I am making now are far more meaningful uh, and they make me smile. So I love that. I think that it's very important to make things that have meaning in our lives that at least bring us intense joy. So if you have a quilt that you're working on right now, and it feels like pulling teeth and you hate it and you hate the colors and you wonder why in the world you bought that fabric in the first place or you just made it just to use something up uh, and you're just in purgatory, quilting purgatory, you have my permission to throw it in the trash or sell it on eBay or just get rid of it, gift it to somebody else who likes it and move on to something that you enjoy making. You have my permission to do that. Get on a jail free card, right? And I hope you'll take it. So that is pretty much it for all of the news around the house. I hope that you have enjoyed hanging out with me today as I did some pressing. <sighs> Life is good. Life is amazing. I hope that you are feeling happy and filled with gratitude and peace. And if you aren't, I hope that you will ask God for help and guidance with that because that is the source of my gratitude and peace. Always, I am thanking God every day for the blessings in our lives. We have been through a hard season. I'll be honest, it's about two years of extreme trial and difficulty. And I am so happy to be through that and in a new, in a new phase of my life, definitely in a new season uh, and just so in love with my family and so very, very thankful for all that we have. So thank you guys for watching and listening. I hope that you will come and check out the projects. I'll share some photos and stuff on the blog as well. And if you are wanting anything grace related, my advice would be to try and order before July 1st. Until next time, let's go quilt. <laughs>